Young Midoriya, I don't regret giving you one for all one bit. Hello and welcome to another Hot Rods to Review. Today I'll be talking about the movie My Hero Academia Heroes Rising. And of course, I'll be addressing how this movie seriously spoiled some of the events that were gonna happen in season five and even some in the manga. When I first saw this movie, I saw it in theaters with my friends and I can't believe I didn't pick up on some of this stuff then. Before I get into this review, I just have to ask you to leave a like on this video and to Detroit smash that subscribe button if you wanna see more content like this. With that being said, let's get into the review. I definitely wasn't paying as much attention on my first viewing as I was on my second one, but now I realize that this movie kinda did spoil a lot of stuff in the anime and manga. And maybe spoil is too strong of a word, but there was definitely a lot of heavy foreshadowing. I won't talk about what was foreshadowed in the manga because the anime still hasn't gotten to that point yet, but I'll definitely talk about what was foreshadowed in the anime. One thing I feel like I can definitely call a spoiler was the reveal of Tokoyami's Black Fallen Angel technique. This movie came out somewhere in between season four and that ability wasn't officially put on display until season 5. I didn't completely notice it on first viewing because he was kind of a background character in this movie, but you can clearly see him using it. In the big foreshadowing I was talking about earlier was that Nine basically revealed that Deku had the potential to use multiple quirks, which again, wasn't something that was officially revealed until season 5, when Deku awakened Black Whip. <laughs> When I first heard Nine say that line, I thought he meant the stockpiling effect of One For All was too much for him to steal, and I was completely oblivious to the fact that Deku would actually become a user of multiple quirks. But this subtle foreshadowing made me wonder if there were any other bits of foreshadowing in this movie that the anime and manga hadn't even gotten to yet. And I think I found a big one, so stick around because I'll be talking about it at the end of the video. The plot of this movie was very simple, and I gotta say that's also part of this movie's charm. The basic plot allowed for more of an explanation and focus of the other Class 1A characters. Even though Deku and Bakugo were the main focus of this film, it really did feel like every character kinda got their moment, no matter how small. Even the petting hero, Anima, the character who is more invisible than Invisible Girl, kinda had a moment in this movie. A small moment, mind you, but a moment nonetheless. And I really like how the movie's stakes were a lot higher than the last one. These kids are basically responsible for an entire island's safety. If they failed, a lot of innocents could get hurt or even potentially die, as opposed to two heroes where failure would mean that one guy gets kidnapped. And since protection was a big part of this movie, the film had a more heroic feeling because being a hero is about more than just defeating villains. It's about self-sacrifice and protecting others. Not to mention, there was a very friendly neighborhood type of feel with these heroes getting super involved with the community and just helping out with small tasks. And the main villain of this film was definitely a highlight. The main villain's name was Nine, and he had the ability to possess nine quirks. It's a little on the nose, but I'ma let it slide. He was literally a discount all for one, and he was the strongest villain that Deku has ever had to fight. The last time that Deku seriously struggled against a villain was in season three when he fought against Muscular. But this guy had multiple quirks, and they were all pretty powerful. So it made a lot of sense as to why he would struggle so much. And I believe this battle really demonstrated how tactical Bakugo is when he fights. It felt like Midoriya just attempted to punch through Nine's barrier over and over and hoped that it would break, while Bakugo actually used his mobility to move quicker than Nine could even put up the barriers. Once Bakugo seen how Nine used the quirk, it was like he knew how to best dodge and parry those attacks. This movie definitely made me respect Bakugo's skills way more than I used to. And while I did like this villain, I also felt like his goal was a little too simplistic. I completely understand why he would want to steal a cell activation quirk, but I just can't see where his desire to rule the world came from. He didn't really have that extensive of a backstory and I do feel like that hurt his character a bit. I guess the audience was supposed to assume that the power got to his head. It's a little cliche, but it was a simple plot after all. Maybe if he were too developed, then there wouldn't have been as much room to focus on the other aspects. I don't really know, but it is what it is. One of the last things I wanted to talk about was how the transfer of One For All was handled, because I have some very mixed feelings about it. 
First, I'll say I thought it was really cool that this was something that Deku was willing to do. It was conveyed that he was a true hero as he would sacrifice his dream of becoming a hero in order to protect others. And the animation of the double one for all coming to take down Nine was just beautiful. It really was the best animation of the entire film and I remembered watching it in awe. And I loved the reference to All Might vs All for One as they both ended with All Might and Deku respectively saying farewell to One for All. Sarabata. One for all. Sayonara. One for all. However, rewatching this scene just didn't hit the same way that it did when I watched it for the first time. And I feel like it was mostly because I knew that there wasn't going to be any real consequence for Deku transferring his quirk to Bakugo. In the end, he got his quirk back and it doesn't really get explained. We've had the function of this quirk explained multiple times, so this situation kind of created an inconsistency. However, it is possible that this seemingly bad writing was actually just more foreshadowing, because while the scene made no sense with regard to the function of the quirk, it made a lot of sense when you think about the potential purpose of this quirk. The quirk is called One For All, so maybe it means one quirk that can be used by all people. Maybe Deku used the quirk in a new way that not even All Might knew about. So instead of actually transferring the power, he shared it with Bakugo for a short amount of time. If it is true that this is foreshadowing, I predict that Deku will need to use One For All this way again and share it with his allies in the future when Deku takes on Tomura Shigaraki. Knowing that there were a lot of instances of foreshadowing in this movie, and knowing that Horikoshi technically said that the movies were canon, this becomes a very legitimate possibility. Or maybe I'm just overthinking it and it actually is bad writing. Who's to say? Overall, I really enjoyed this movie. One thing that I didn't really talk too much about was that there was no Melissa character in this film, and I think that was a good thing. Not because she was a bad character, but because she was too good of a character to be confined to just a movie. And I am still a little upset that she won't be relevant in future plots, but the kids that appeared in this movie were cool, but not characters that I can get overly invested in. I don't need to see Katsuma become a hero in order to be satisfied with this character. So overall, I think I'll give this movie a solid 8 out of 10. There were a lot of things that I took issue with, but I still really like this movie, and I can't wait to see the next one. Well, those were my thoughts on My Hero Academia Heroes Rising. If you like this video, consider watching another one. I talk about a variety of different topics on this channel, so I hope to see you in the next one. This has been the Hot Rodster. Peace out.